Here are my slow travel tips. These tips will save your money and give you a better overall experience as you slow travel the world. As I share my slow travel tips, you don't need to write anything down. I'll tell you how to get this information in writing in the last 30 seconds of the video. And I'm gonna show you pictures of places I've visited in 65 countries as I talk about this. Uh, what is the slow travel mindset? Slow travel is a mindset with a travel purpose to educate yourself about the world. Your daily activities are generally more focused on learning the local foods, architecture, history, natural beauty, and the culture. You are entertained by the things you learn as you slow travel the world. You're generally traveling alone or with a few intimate friends and almost never join groups of strangers organized by a travel agency. You typically stay longer in each place and travel between places on local transportation where you can see the landscape of the country from the ground, like buses and trains and minivans, that kind of thing. What is the tourist travel mindset? The tourist uh, travel mindset is more typically the pursuit of entertainment to blow off steam for a week or two before going home. Uh, some are cultural tours with a local tour guide that describes the cultural information as people are moved by bus to multiple destinations. Uh, the main interest is visual exposure to the culture with very little immersion. Another tourist mindset is relaxation at a beach or mountain resort while uh, tourists live on a, in a gated community separate from the local culture with fewer superficial contacts with local culture. Uh, cost of living for tourist mindset versus slow travel mindset. The slow travel mindset is often half the cost of the tourist mindset. Here are our slow travel tips to save money and learn more about the culture uh, you are visiting as you travel the world. Okay, stay in the tan area of Google Maps. In this Google Map photo, you'll see a tan area. When you arrive at the bus station or ferry port of a new town, you want to already have the address of the first place you booked. Your first accommodation should be in the tan area. The tan area is Google's way of telling you this is the high human density uh, area of town. The first few days, uh, you can walk around and learn all about this new town from a local's perspective. Uh, where is the main market? What are the locally owned non-franchise restaurants? What do people uh, do for fun? What is the main square? Or where is the main square? Is there a bar hopping area? What makes this town tick? Once you've learned all about the town, you can begin your exploration of more outlying areas and natural beauty. But start in the walkable areas first, uh, so you don't need to rent a scooter car or taxi during the first few days when you're figuring out the main area of the city, the tan area. Then if you decide to move to the countryside in a few days, you'll know where everything is when you need to come into town to pick something up or to do something. Okay, how do you book a place? Airbnb, booking.com, agoda.com, Facebook, and for rent size, we start for rent signs. We start looking for a place to stay on Airbnb. We rarely find places that fit within our long-term budget of around 20 per night uh, in the tan area. So we pick five to 10 of these places uh, within the tan area of Google Maps and we make offers uh, Dear Susan, we'll be in town for a week and really loved your place, but it is over our budget. Would you take $100 for the week or whatever the number is you want to offer? Uh, check and you will see that we have only positive reviews from landlords and we'll give you the best detailed reviews you've ever received. Read my profile and you'll see what I mean. Thanks, Dan. We also check booking.com and Agoda for the great deals. We also leave a message on the expat Facebook page for each town a few weeks before we arrive and leave a message asking for places to rent in the central area. 
We can easily save 30% on the first place we rent when we land in a new city using this procedure. Once we are there, during the first week, once we're on the ground, we find our favorite area of the city. We then look for rental signs and Airbnb listings in that area. Like here in Dumaguete, we went from paying about $24 per night down to about $14 per night for the second place we rented. It's easier to get the best possible deal when you have your feet on the ground in a new town. That's why you want to start with a shorter period and then increase the length of it once you have more information. Um, also, don't ignore the weekly and monthly discounts on Airbnb. Those are a great money saver also. Also, don't be afraid to rent just a room uh, in an Airbnb apartment or stay in a hostel for a few nights. We have been pleasantly happy doing that when none of our other tricks have worked. Uh, plus, hostels are great places to get quick information uh, from people uh, that have been there a few days or weeks more than you. Okay, national, regional, and world transfers. When you slow travel uh, the world, you should save as much money as possible on transfers between cities. Do your be best to move linearly, uh, linearly through country without doubling back. Try to see everything of interest in a country before moving to a new region. Um, try to make transfers using cheap ground transportation whenever possible. As we travel across the country, we often create notes about how we moved cheaply to the next city in the country. Those notes uh, often end up in our retired cheap reports, our country tour reports, and our regional travel reports links provided. Here in the Philippines, we have been averaging about seven to $20 per person to transfer between cities on local buses, ferries, and minivans. Stay away from airports unless the flights are cheaper than local transportation or you get an extended visa time for flying into a new country sometimes when you fly. Okay, Skyscanner, when you decide to fly for any reason, you'll find the, be the cheapest flights on Skyscanner link provided. To save the most money, be, be, be flexible on the days you're willing to fly. You could easily save 30% by checking all flights uh, within the month. I always buy a one-way ticket so I can change my travel plans at any time. Always verify whether you need a visa to visit or enter a country. Uh, Google the name of the country plus the words visa required. Your country should appear on a list of countries on an embassy webpage the, for the country you're visiting. The embassy will list countries that need a visa for entry or other conditions for entry if no visa required. Okay, onward tickets. Even if no visa is required, always check immigration and entry requirements and airline boarding requirements. Either may require that you have proof of onward flights before they let you into the country or board a flight. But always show up at the airport three hours before your flight takes off. I've had an airline request proof of onward flight without warning. If you come three hours early, you can step out of line and purchase an onward flight for 12 bucks, link provided. Um, I That's for an onward ticket. I have had to do this twice and it worked both times. Okay, visa tricks. About a month before flying to a new country, place a message in the expat Facebook page for a popular expat town in that country. Something like, hey, I'm only allowed two months tourist visa, but I want to stay for six months. Does anybody have an idea of a visa that would allow six months student, cultural, business visa? I'm willing to fulfill all the legal requirements, honestly. I just need a little guidance. Do you have any ideas? Uh, you may learn of an honest way to stay longer that someone has used before. Also, read the types of visas that are available on the embassy webpage. You may only be able to get a tourist visa for 30 to 90 days, but you may find that you can study the local language, uh, cooking or history for a few months with a student visa. Your age may not matter. Then Google school name visa and send an email inquiry. Go to class though. You don't want to get blacklisted on any immigration lists for not fulfilling your visa requirements. Okay, last minute details. 
or last minute flights, I should say. Don't assume that booking early saves you money. That's no longer true. Just as often it costs more to book early. I rarely book more than two weeks before I fly. The airlines almost always drop the prices at the last minute on one or two flights uh, to fill all the seats. Skyscanner's monthly view will easily help you find a dirt cheap one-way flight. So check it and try last minute flying. Okay, local markets. Buy your groceries in the main local market instead of the tourist mall grocery stores. Best cheap restaurants in city name. We often find our favorite local restaurants Googling this. We also ask locals in, and it's often on TripAdvisor, for example, with tell us like three or four cheap restaurants with higher ratings that the locals eat at. We also ask locals in, the main lo in, locals in the main local market the name of their favorite cheap local restaurants near the market. They often work near the market and have a few ideas where they eat almost every day the, uh, on their break at work or when they shop or whatever. If you don't understand, if they don't understand your question, ask it a couple different ways like, where do you go to eat around here when you are on a break? Or what is your favorite traditional food in this city? Is it served in a restaurant near here? Which one? Um, cook meals in your Airbnb. Google traditional dishes of, of the country you're in. Once you know the name of the dish, go to YouTube and search how to cook traditional dish name. I save a bunch of money by cooking at home. I cook foreign dishes, also my home dishes. Chung and I also pack a lunch sometimes when we are going on a day trip so we don't get stuck paying tourist prices when we're in an area we don't know well enough yet to get a good deal. A backpack, always carry a small backpack with water, suntan lotion, some healthy snacks, possibly lunch, and mosquito repellent. It's all. It's always cheaper to buy this stuff in advance at large markets than to try to wait until the moment you need them at a small convenience store. They don't always have them in smaller markets and if they do, they cost more. Okay, self-guided tours. We do our own research and create our own self-guided tours. Um, that is how we teach ourselves about the nuances of culture, its foods and architecture and history when we slow travel. Many of, uh, many of our uh, retired chief reports include videos of us taking our own self-guided tours and discussing the significance of places so you can watch the videos and decide which ones are worth a visit. Uh, those are in our report, retired chief reports. Uh, buy alcohol in local stores. If you buy imported alcohol, it can easily cost you 400% higher than the local choices. If you buy foreign alcohol in tourist bars, it could cost you 800% more. The local alcohol usually has a story uh, behind it. Learn the story and buy local to learn about the culture. Like for example, in Mexico, you're gonna wanna learn about tequila. Uh, in the Caribbean, you're gonna wanna learn about the rums. Uh, it's part of the culture and it's way cheaper. Okay, picnics, pack your lunch and a light blanket when you go on a self-guided tour. You'll make a tour memorable by having a little picnic in a scenic place during your tour. Plus, you'll save buckets of money compared to eating in the tourist restaurants. Okay, local buses. Google and ask others about the local buses rather than tour buses. You can learn a lot about a culture just watching the, culture, the locals in their element. Plus, the prices can be 90% cheaper easily. Watch YouTube videos uh, on cheap tours and cheap videos. You'll almost always get a few tips that will make the tour more enjoyable and cheaper or add a dimension to the tour that nobody else got to see. Move less. The slower you travel, the lower your daily costs will be. One week and one month rates can be as much as 40% off in you know, a two, three, four day rate. Your first few days getting to know a town will have a few cost surprises, but they will drop fast as you learn more tricks and places, ways to save money. That is why slow travel is better and cheaper. Travel with spices. We travel with spices, a can opener, a cutting knife, and a frying pan. If the kitchen in our Airbnb is poorly equipped, we are still ready to make a nice 
basic meal. And often I carry uh, some non-perishables with me in case I have to make a meal if we arrive late at night. Um, you know, just some tomato sauce and some pasta and some spices makes a nice meal. Always keep luggage below the limits. Never pay extra for checked or carry-on luggage. Most airlines will allow 7 kg carry-on, which is about 15 pounds, or 20 kg checked, which is about 50 pounds. Check in advance and try to stay under that so you're not paying extra for luggage. Make coffee at home. We make coffee at home. We end up averaging about 20 cents a cup of coffee instead of two bucks um, at the, you know, at a, at a Starbucks or something ridiculous like that. It adds up quickly. Uh, fly to family once a year. We do not fly willy-nilly all over the world. We only get on planes to see family once per year and to move about regions of the world. We travel to see everything in a region of the world before we move on to another part of the world. The only round trip flights we take are when we interrupt our travel to go home and see family for a few weeks. All of this is in our affordable world tour report, link provided. For a written copy of this information, Click more information in the notes below this YouTube video. Uh, my name is Dan. Thanks for listening to my slow travel tips. Click the slow travel the world cheap playlist that appears top right on your screen about now for more on this topic. To see our, our 50 plus retired cheap reports all over the world, visit vagabondbuddha.com. The world is your home. What time will you be home for dinner?